Hi everyone, Andrew Hutchinson here, and today I'm going to be talking about what librarians can do while we're quarantined. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only librarian out there really missing going into work every single day, not only to be around books, but also to be around patrons that I love so much and my coworkers that I appreciate so much. And being from home is a weird thing and trying to figure out what I can possibly do in terms of my library work, but I have found a series of things that I feel have been effective for me, and so I wanted to share them today for anyone out there interested in hearing about them. So, what I have for some ideas in terms of what we librarians can do while in quarantine, to start off with is marketing online services. So this is really a time for us as modern libraries to say, hey, did you know that we offer streaming services. So for instance, my library has a contract with Canopy, which is semi like Netflix, um, and patrons can log on with their library card and watch at least 10 films per month, as well as uh, The Great Courses and Canopy Kids. You can get unlimited kids videos. Uh, this is also time to stress Overdrive or Libby in terms of accessing ebooks and audiobooks because many people will be trying to get those now that they can't get physical copies of certain things. And also many libraries have their own databases. So whether it's anything through EBSCOhost or Mango for learning languages or there's some romance novel ones I've seen um, or in Colorado, for instance, where I am, we have access to local Colorado legal service, judicial service, um, historical newspapers. There's so much out there. And so I think no matter what, for our patrons, we can market anything for our libraries that they can get on the internet. Now, unfortunately, some patrons, especially where I am in more of a rural area, aren't always able to access Wi-Fi, but even if they're able to come to the library just to be outside within range, some people can access it in their cars, that might still give them something if they're able to get close enough to get that Wi-Fi access. Another thing that librarians can be doing is planning for the future. So, which not only is helpful because just realizing that one day that this will end and that we will be able to go back to work and be in our libraries, even though I'm sure we're gonna have to keep up with things like social distancing, um, cleaning, etc. We can really plan for what it will be like to be back. And I think an important piece of that, and maybe it's just because I am in charge of a lot of programming at my library, is thinking about what are patrons going to need when we return. So I'm thinking of already potentially hosting a DIY class about making face masks. Um, I don't know how to sew, but I can find someone who does and might be willing to teach. Um, if we can get some sewing machines donated, maybe figuring out how to make masks. Maybe we can get patrons of ours to volunteer their time and churn out masks and we buy the fabric and then we can just offer them up for free to our community members. Uh, I think that'll be an important piece. Um, as well as offering even counseling type services. So referring people who after all this is over might need some form of mental health services in the area, just someone to talk to. I think that will be incredibly important as well as even finding local professors, teachers, sociologists, anyone who are willing to talk about what just happened, why it happened, and how can we better prepare for even a pandemic or anything like this in the future, as well as just always using our website and other resources to give our users the most updated information about the coronavirus and uh, from local public health agencies, contact information, testing sites and centers, etc. So my brain is already going towards that. And once we're back, how can we further support the patrons in our community? But also just a sense of normalcy. So getting back into our book clubs, getting back into, we have a knitters group that meets every week, um, getting back into programs that we already had planned in the summer before this, um, so that it's not all about that, but it's also just a sense of, here we are. We have, again, some local authors come in to visit to talk about their books. We've got a similar summer, um, summer reading events for adults and kids to get back into reading. So it, 
there are so many things that we can do to also try to return to some semblance of normalcy. Um, another thing that librarians can be doing right now, other than marketing online services and planning for the future, are getting projects done, those things that we've been meaning to do for a while. Um, our library staff was able to stay a little bit after we closed to the public, and we used that time to move some furniture around, do some deep cleaning we've been meaning to do, so that was really helpful, especially for the public for when we return. But also now that we are away from the library, I can finally personally start working on a digitization project. So we have a local oral history program, as well as we scan pictures and documents. So I can go through a lot of that and get that uploaded onto our Omeka-based historical database website. I can also start organizing my own files and going through my staff server and really just start cleaning up a bunch of stuff I've always wanted to get reorganized, but I just haven't had the time to do. And also minimize. I can also then start deleting a lot of things that I just don't need anymore. So I think whether it's digitizing, organizing, minimizing, I think there's a lot we can do to clean up our own computers and our own workspace before we go back to work one day. And lastly, I think this is a really important piece, is checking in on patrons. So we librarians, we make meaningful connections with the people in our community, especially with people who come in the library a lot. And we know who those patrons are who might live alone, who might be of a risky population in terms of health and with the coronavirus going around right now. We know people who might be homebound. So I think it's imperative for us to librarians, if we can, to, if we have a phone number or an email, to call and reach out to those people and just say, hey, how are you? You know, I'm not at work right now, but I'm still thinking about you. And again, these are some services that maybe we can offer you if you didn't already know about them. Maybe you can go if you have Wi-Fi and check out our website and use these things. But otherwise, if you just need to talk, I'm here. I'm I'm off the clock, but or I'm off site, but I'm still here from you. You're a patron I care about a lot, and I just wanted to see how you're doing. I think for a lot of patrons out there, it will mean the world to them to have someone check in on them uh, at a place that they probably are also missing, because uh, it's easy to forget that we might miss going to work, but there's a lot of people who are missing libraries right now. And so uh, just furthering acts of kindness for one another I think is so important during this time. So in the comments below, I would love to hear how other librarians out there are handling their time of maybe being quarantined at home, uh, what they're working on or not working on, what we're doing for our mental health. And maybe if you're not a librarian and you're an active library user, what you miss about libraries and maybe once this is all over, what you might want from your library in terms of programming or otherwise. So. Hang in there, you guys. This will end one day, and we can all be back in strengthening our libraries and our communities. But until then, I hope this video hopefully gave you some ideas about what you might be able to do um, as this continues on and what might we hope for in the future. In the meantime, take care, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.